Hey up everyone and welcome back to part 3 of the best bridge in Holland where things could be going a lot better right now. I'm still trying to get across this bleeding canal. I've pretty much totally lost my first platoon trying to force the left hand forward and I've lost one panther over there and had another one immobilised leaving me with just these two on my bank. The third one over there, the crippled one, is actually in a good position to hammer the buildings in the main objective so it can be getting on with that before somebody knocks it out while I try to knock out Chris's remaining tanks with the other two. At the same time I'm trying to rush my third platoon which is now on the half tracks over to the other Ford. Hopefully we can get across there, hit the objective, knock him off balance. But we'll see. This is the immobilised panther, which I've given a target armour arc, so it's looking behind it at whatever shot it. You're a bit of a ping there, that's my left hand panther getting pounded by something which, predictably, it can't really see. Oh, it looks like Chris has moved at least one tank up. That's what that little uh, green spot behind the immobilised panther is. At some point, my left hand panther, which is just at the bottom in the middle there, gets its main gun knocked out. Might be then. Uh, which is just wonderful, obviously, because uh, that way I only have one fully functional panther left. There we go, that's the Sherman taking some pop shots at it. So this panther is useless in the armour fight, so it's coming back. I'm going to swap it with my remaining fully functional one. And as you can see, Chris has two Shermans up here. He's sending one up to clear out my infantry at the Ford, which I wouldn't think is going to take him very long. There we go. And I decided to open up on some of his infantry, and yes, little flashing icons. Lots of little red crosses. They're all dead. Um, agonizingly, the panther which is immobilized there, that purple thing you can see is the target armor arc, which is what it can see. And it just can't see that Sherman. Now I've lost it completely because all my infantry are dead. Apart from I think there's two guys hanging around down there. Just on the right of the ford. So to solve this problem, I've popped up the uh, tank commander for the immobilized panther and see if he can't see better. I have actually got eyes on both of those Shermans. The right hand one there, Chris is sneaking it up through my own smoke screen to shoot the panther in the arse again. Which of course is entirely sensible. And my good panther is just coming into position, hull down on the embankment. a little bit too far zoomed out to see really but yep yeah, there we go there's the Sherman at the Ford you can see it puts around through the turret and there goes the ammo coming off so nobody got out of that unlucky chaps the other Sherman has disappeared and that's because it's in the smoke screen so we can't see it but we can hear it And it's just coming right up, right on top of it. Yep, there it is. They've seen each other. Turrets are traversing. I think this is the target acquisition here is a bit slowed down because they're so close together that the barrel actually can't reach the Sherman. Uh, and the game's kind of abstracting to make up the part that it's a ludicrous shot. The Sherman's decided to nail the tank commander and is severely punished for it. Bad move there guys. What's the result? Do we need to get another round off? Oh, hatches are opening. That's one dead Sherman. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, I've 
sent a fire team across to have a quick look at the other ford and there's some enemy infantry in the corner of those woods there that was the panther making sure the sherman was dead in the background there's infantry up in the building that we know about them some more further back in the field so I don't want to send my unmounted infantry across there again what I want to do is not bother fighting about those woods really suppress it make sure that I'm not gonna have any problems oh he just got nailed crossing get my infantry crossing the half tracks get into the objective and take that not a fantastic plan but I can't really afford to have that many more infantry casualties I've already lost an entire platoon there goes the panther the immobilized panther hammering the building in the objective that's what we want to see and my good panther has moved up onto the canal bridge where it's actually shelling this bit of the wood here, or I think it is anyway. Just in the background there, calling for some mortars. Uh, the only place I can actually see on the other side without getting shot to pieces is the building in the objective, so that's where it's getting called in, but it's quite a, uh, should be quite wide dispersion on the incoming rounds should be quite effective against anybody hiding in those crops. I think that's Chris's infantry trying to nail the panther with a bazooka from those woods. Judging from the angles. But uh, it's not in too bad a position there actually. Oh, here comes the spotting round. That fire team I sent across the scout, I'm moving that back now because uh, it's done its job. There's no point in hanging around there getting shot. My pillbox panther, you can just about see at the bottom there, that's moving up to support it when the time comes. Uh, pillbox panther because he doesn't have the main gun anymore, he's just a pair of machine guns on tracks with lots of armour. And uh, immobilized panther. Yep, game over for the immobilized panther. It just took a bazooka. Hatch is open, and here come the crew to be mown down by vengeful American infantry. So, I know he's got an infantry squad up there. He's not going to have one squad on its own, there's probably a platoon. Call it another platoon on my right in the other wood, on the other ford, maybe one at the back, call it a company. Haven't seen him mortar me yet, that's a bit worrying. Nope, oh, that fire mission should be coming in pretty soon. The half tracks are stacking up at the ford, standing by to go. They've gone the long way around the back because um, I didn't. It was much easier to just send them straight down the back, across the open and then back up and try and get through the woods. Mainly, as you can see with that one at the back, because they're just going to get lost. Now, this is the company HQ, which is calling the fire mission in and is now happily shooting away at that building into the great open cavity that the panther has made for them. Possibly not the best thing for the company commander to be doing, but uh, and Chris is running some infantry across into that field. Bad move! Here comes the mortars. And they weren't very effective in the woods, or I don't think they were very effective in the woods over on the left. Out here, out in the open, there's not a lot of cover. Sucks to be an infantryman. Now, it would be nice to put some smoke down, screen off that ford, but I just can't get the spotting to do it, which is why it's just the HE. Now, at this point, you may notice the game is paused. This is because 
we've entered the negotiating phase, which you guys can't hear because I didn't record the team speak. Uh, of course, we're playing this via the Himachi Land type stuff, so we're churning the turns out pretty quickly every couple of minutes. And we're chatting to each other on the team speak at the same time. And Chris has offered a ceasefire. And looking at the map, if I accept that, I'm going to get a draw. So I've turned around and said, no, surrender. And he did. Aren't negotiations wonderful? Um, of course, this is because I have tanks left and Chris doesn't. I've won the armor battle. He doesn't know that one of my panthers is crippled. But to some extent, even that doesn't matter because all I have to do is get across that ford and beat the snot out of him from a distance with my tanks and he can't really hurt me. It wouldn't be fun for either of us to do. So he's throwing the towel in. So looking at the post battle statistics, Chris has 153 men left at the end compared to my 79. That's to be expected. The Americans always bring more bodies to the party. We both lost 28 dead. He lost 25 wounded to my 12. That's about double. Probably the result of the mortars, if I had to guess. He's lost five Shermans, two priest self-propelled guns and one jeep. And I've lost two panthers. The tanks are fairly hard to compare, really, uh, in terms of losses due to the quality versus quantity argument. But all that aside, it's been a pretty evenly matched game. Um, a bit of bluffing at the end is what secured me the victory. Overall, it's been a hell of a good laugh. I really enjoyed it. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Stay tuned for some more videos, guys. I've got a good uh, urban warfare experience in Arnhem coming up with lots of fun stuff. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. And I'll catch you all in the next video.